<sighs> What's the matter? Did you hear a noise? It's the vacuum. Okay. <sighs> hey. Wanna say hi to the people? Come here. You better. See, he's fine. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish. If we haven't met, <laughs> we have met. Welcome back. He thinks I'm talking to him. That's what always happens. He's fine. He was just, I mean, he's just generally a pretty anxious dog. That's what makes us so bonded. So you're fine though, right? How are you? It's actually St. Patrick's Day. You're not gonna see this till the following weekend, but happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope you had a great one. I do have my St. Patrick's Day socks on. We're actually here to do a project update. Let's do it. It's been 95 days, so it's a kind of close to 90 days. That's sort of my goal, although it's a loose goal. If it was 110, I wouldn't care. You know me. I have all my finished projects that I could think of and find here on my desk. It is not the stack it was last time. Last time was nutsy, but... Oh, I just realized I'm not gonna put the breed study skeins up or Hanks up until we're completely done. So that'll probably be the next one. Yeah, should be the next one as long as I stay on track, which so far, I don't know, I can't knock wood. Um, yeah, I can. So good. Okay. These won't be in chronological order. I'm just gonna do them in order of what's on my desk here. So let's get to it. I need my sock blockers. <laughs> Last fall, I dyed some sock yarns for Christmas socks. I'm sure you guys saw them. And I did get them done in time for Christmas and we wore them. In fact, John is still wearing his a lot. He really likes, um, he really likes the sock yarn and I'm not sure, I bought it from somebody who was like de-stashing it. It was in, I think one pound like Hanks, these great big Hanks and you gotta separate it. And well, you don't have to separate it. I mean, you could just make a sweater out of it, right? It is so nice as a sock yarn and I just think I better figure out where she got it. I suspect it was Dyer Supplier. Maybe I'll look. It's really nice sock yarn and this is the sock that I dyed to look like Christmas tree with colored lights. I actually improved the process and did a better job later, but these have been worn probably a half a dozen times and washed and they are looking so good. So I feel like I need to find the sock yarn again. When you buy off a D stash, you just don't know. And I was kind of scared about it, but it's really holding up very, very nicely. And so I'll show you mine too. So these were my Christmas socks. These were from a blank. I think I'm going to do some more blank dyeing this summer when I can be outside. But again, I've worn these a number of times and washed them and they have held up just really, really well. So I'm happy with these. Next. All right. So I did a lot of everything really weaving. The only thing I didn't do is crochet and I didn't, I haven't felted since Halloween, but a lot of you guys will remember this cowl. I can't even remember. What is it called? I actually wore this a ton this winter. It looks so cute. I have a black coat that has like a big furry hood and it looks so cute under that coat. I wore it a lot and I really like the colors and this is not a green that I would wear very often. Any kind of yellowy green, I usually kind of shy away from, but I just love how this cowl, hero cowl, hero? I love how it turned out. I really would like to make more, so maybe I'll just plan on trying to hit that before next winter because it is very, very comfy. It's warm without being like, it looks so cute under a coat. So, I mean, you can't really go wrong with all that, right? Yarn is Malabrigo. The colors are Azul and Ivy. I finished two sweaters in this 90 day period and I have one that I'm working on but it probably won't be done until like sock madness is done because I won't have as much time to work on it in between. They are the same sweater. Okay our youngest had this sweater it's called the Whiskey Creek Pullover. It is an interweave pattern I think. It's an interweave pattern 
and he had it made from Will of the Andes tweed because he really wanted it to be tweedy and dark brown and they had a dark brown tweedy yarn but it wasn't super wash and he washed it in the washing machine and felted it. And he was like scared to tell me but I don't really care because I loved to knit another sweater so it's fine. I told him to bring it back to mommy and mommy will make him mittens. That's me, I'm mommy. So that hasn't happened yet but he did promise me that he didn't throw it away. <laughs> Who knows? Before he took it home, I got some video of him. And you aren't gonna see the hammy part because he really started to ham it up after I started to stop the camera. And I don't know where he got his hamminess from. His dad, I guess. The yarn is Malabrigo Rios in the colorway Whole Grain. And that is like one of his most favorite colors for like a top. <sighs> that is a really pretty simple pattern. And it's almost seamless. You knit up to the armpits and then like knit the front and the back and when you finish each side of the front you continue for like four more inches of collar and then you attach the collar in the back and sew it to the back of the neck so there's a seam there and then the sleeves are knit in the round and then set in so there is a seam around like every both arms but that's it so it's very good finishing really easy weaving in ends because you know you don't have like all these separate pieces and when I did the back or the cop back of the collar I even like made one of the ends that came out of where was it the shoulder I think it was at the shoulder I made that end really long so I could actually use the end to sew the back of the collar in and then weave it in this is how much I hate weaving in ends Follow me for more tips on how to be lazy. Our youngest is actually our fourth son. We have five kids. We also have a girl. She's between the third son and the fourth son in age. Our third oldest son texted me probably a month ago, maybe, and said, hey, I might like a sweater for next winter. He's the same height as John. John is 6'4". Well, he was 6'4". He says he's shrunken now. I don't know. But he's about 6'4", maybe 6'4 and a half. So same long arms, same long torso, but he is like really skinny. I don't know how skinny he is, but he's really skinny. But I had just finished that Whiskey Creek and I really feel like that sweater flatters like any man in the world. And Dylan is 26. He just got married in January. His wife has a little boy, or I guess now they both have a little boy who just turned eight. So he's a dad now and I thought, he needs a dad sweater when he asks for a sweater. So I made him the same sweater. I finished it yesterday. Cause the collar is like the best part. I love a small shawl. I love a shawl collar period, to be honest. But a smaller shawl collar that's like a little bit more understated, a little bit more like, it's so Ward Cleaver. It's such a dad sweater. I love it. Okay, this is really hard. <laughs> there we go. It's Cascade 220 and the color is called Shire. So, and it's just this like long skinny sweater. <laughs> so I'm gonna block it today and then as soon as it's dry, I'm gonna get it in the mail to him. He doesn't know it's done yet, so it's just gonna show up. So that'll be kind of fun. Some of you saw my new loom this week. I just introduced her. It was her, what do you call it when it's your first time on stage? It was her debut. Oh my God, really? But she's been here for a while. The project that's on the loom right now and by the way Ruth suggested Dolly for a name for my loom because she's working she's a hard-working lady she's working nine to five so her name is Dolly right after I got Dolly in the house I tried to warp her and failed miserably and literally cut the warp off <laughs> I don't know if, if you weave and you have looked at the Maysville cotton which is what I use for the towels you know it's pretty affordable and I had actually wound it from the back to the front and then back to the back and back to the front again and broken I don't know how many threads trying to get it right and finally I was like mm -mm, nope we're done with this we're starting over cut it off got a new warp on I wove some Christmas towels I think I did show a picture of these somewhere so there were one or two more Somebody for Christmas asked me for some Christmas towels. I can't remember who it was. So one or two of them is gone and like a dummy, I did not film any. 
check these out. You guys always have so many questions about the towels. These are made from 8-2 cotton. Now on my Rigid Head Loom, I thread it double with um, the 12.5 DPI heddle. On Dolly, I used a 12, so they, it's so slightly looser. It, it's barely even noticeable, if it is noticeable at all. And it just turned out so dang adorable. I don't know if I can give this up. Look how cute that is. It's Maysville cotton. I get Maysville cotton at Great Northern Weaving. It's in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And this is not sponsored, but call me. I just love it and I can't, I honestly will be making more probably early fall this year because I am so thrilled with how these turned out. I actually have a bunch of Christmas designs pinned because for whatever reason, they're so fun to make. This is just what was left at the end. And I like to, you guys know, make myself like a little towel that can just sit next to my sink for everything I hand wash. It just literally sits there all the time and I throw it in the wash every probably week because it doesn't really get dirty. It just has clean dishes on it when I, wash, when I hand wash stuff. My favorite one of the bunch that I kept. This one. So this one is Twill. And this is the one that made me want to try this out. This was my first try reading a draft. When I do this next year, I'll definitely film it. At the time, I felt so unconfident with warping and stuff that really all of it. I just felt like filming it is like one extra step, more work, more effort, whatever. And I was like, I just don't have it in me to add effort to this, but it's getting better. So next year, I promise you, we will weave these towels. I have another set of towels. This one has like, sorry, silk all stuff to it. There's a theme at my house. So this warp had a mess up in it. This warp was tighter on one end than the other because of the way it wound onto the back. Some of the paper got like humped up. I don't know how to explain it, but it made a, a wider, thicker spot on one end. So the warp is like, was like kind of crooked. Cattywampus is what we like to say. But you can't tell on the towel. What? I, I think these are just gonna go in the shop. They'll be discounted because that warp was crooked. But they turned out so pretty. I'm gonna quickly show you the whole bunch, but I'll be quick because there's like 10 of them. So each one is a little different with its pattern. <laughs> Sorry, Silk. Each one is a little bit different. I was kind of just trying things, which you guys, I mean, if you've watched me before, you know that's really what I like to do. This one just has an orange background. But I love to make all the different plaids. I don't really think that that's the correct use of the word. I think it's just become a correct word, use of the word, but it really isn't, if that makes sense. Eventually we just accept things that people say a lot. So it's navy and orange, and then there's like a periwinkle, an aqua, and kind of a light apple green in these towels. And this one's my favorite. I love this one. I just kept going. I mean, if you have more warp, you just keep going. This one has like a terracotta for the weft and it's probably not my favorite, but I bet you someone is like, oh, I love it. So there's two to go, two more. So I have a whole big stack of these. I really do like this one too. I guess I should show you the whole warp a sec. That's what the whole warp looked like. These are a little smaller than my normal, but I kind of like them all different sizes, so it's fine. And then this one. So I have this whole stack. I've woven all of these towels in the last 90 days, plus the ones that I'm working on. They, some of them have to go in the shop. I can't keep all these. These are a little smaller, and because that warp, and because that warp was crooked, just in case, I'm gonna put them up discounted. So if you've ever wanted some of the towels, and you want a better deal on them, you can get a better deal on these plaids. A lot of weaving, right? So there's a couple pairs of sacks and one more little bit of weaving and then we're done. Right before we got sick, 
I wove some hand spun on my rigid head of loom. I want to make a bag out of it and I still haven't done it because I haven't been to Joann's yet and I need some very heavy interfacing that I don't have like in my stash. I have some interfacing but nothing that's like super stiff like that. So here is the fabric. You probably, some of you probably watched the video, but it just turned out so pretty. You can't even tell the colors how beautiful they are because that light is so bright that washes them out, but it just turned out so beautiful. I'll link to the pattern for the purse I picked out. I don't remember the name of it, but it's very structured and um, kind of afraid to try it. But at the same time, what have I got to lose? A piece of fabric that I've spent like 60 hours on? Is that all? <laughs> We're down to socks and that's it. Uh, many of you will have seen the Valentine socks that I finished. Obviously they sat on the blockers for a while. <laughs> so these are hand spun. They're from, I think it was the January Paradise box. We got this fiber and they are so like squishy and bouncy and comfy. I love them. They were really pretty for Valentine's Day. They have the Flegal heel, which I talked about in the last Q&A video. Knit them toe up. You guys, if I don't start wearing out some socks soon, I'm not gonna have room in my drawer. So how's that gonna work? I have a pair of like plastic feet. <laughs> what, you don't have a pair of plastic feet? For displaying like hand knit socks because I used to do a lot of test knitting for uh, one of my favorite sock designers. See, this is not going to be as good as I'd like it to be. So these are a pair of socks from a Patton's book called, I think it's called Socks in the City. I don't exactly remember what this pattern is called and I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on the blocker. It's a leading men fiber art yarn. I can't remember the name of the color. I'm so sorry. Let me show you the actual cable pattern. This is the back of the sock. Okay. There. I've actually knit these before. I still own the other pair and I like them so much that I just did another one. So next, some of you guys asked about sock madness. I mentioned it in, was it the Q&A video? I don't know. I mentioned it in a recent video and there were questions. Sock Madness coincides loosely with March Madness, which is most people in the US know what it is. It's like a college basketball tournament thing. And I'm not sportsy. I don't really watch any sports except for maybe a little bit of hockey, although I haven't watched hockey in years now. So Sock Madness is like a tournament. There are warm up socks to begin with and then you knit a qualifying sock. Oh, I forgot my qualifying sock. You knit a qualifying sock, then they put you on a team, then socks drop um, not on a schedule, unexpectedly. You get the pattern in the email and then you need to knit it as fast as you can and then get like the requirements of photographs that you have to show and um, emails and get a project updated on Ravelry. And the faster you do that, the more you can like move up through the tournament. We'll see how I do. Part of me is like, just take it easy, don't stress about it. And then there is this like fire down inside me that's like, no, you can take this. <laughs> I can't, it's a lie. But there's part of me that's like, you need to try your best and like be really competitive. So I don't know if competitive Trish will win. I don't know if easygoing Trish will win. I guess we'll find out at the end. I did it two pairs of the warm up socks. There were three pairs this year. You do not have to knit the warm up socks to participate. And so this is one of the warm up socks. And I'll post links to the warm up sock patterns below. This one I don't remember the name of right off the top of my head. It is knit from Knit Pick Stroll. I actually didn't think I'd like footies, but I love these. And here is what the pattern actually looks like. It's really pretty. I love it. There was another pair of warm up socks. These are called the Pink Lemonade Socks. These are also a footie and I knit them out of the same hank of yarn because when you do footies, you can easily do two pairs. I still have leftover yarn. And I did two pairs of footies that fit me easily. So this is the Pink Lemonade. 
It's a pretty simple one. If you want to learn how to knit lace, I think it's a really good one. And this side is plain. Last thing. All right, these are the qualifying socks for Sock Madness. Um, I just needed to get them out of the way so I could finish that green sweater. So I did kind of bear down to get them done kind of quickly. I will link this pattern. These are the Serezza or Serezza um, Malabrigo sock. And I just used gold beads. I got them at Joann's. I think it's called Moon River. Um, size 60 seed beads or glass beads. And John picked the gold out to go with this yarn. I He always humors me when I say, which color do you think I should use? He's like, I love gold and red together. And they turned out so, so pretty, but they're too small for me because I knit the smalls. And um, yeah, not sure. I guess I'll just find someone with smaller feet and give them to them. It had a really super cool heel. Hang on, let me show you the heel. You know how on like a sock with a heel flap, the gussets are kind of like on the side and then you decrease down the foot? Well, this gusset is in the back. Okay, so let's get, there you go. This is the gusset right here. So it actually, as you're knitting, you split the heel here and you just start making the gusset right here. And then, here, let me, this is the bottom of the foot and it decreases down the bottom of the middle of the foot. So your decreases do not show up on the side of the sock where they do when you do a heel flap. You make them a mirror image of each other so that when you wear them, the pair mirrors itself. That was part of the requirements for this sock. So to wrap up, what are you working on that you love? Are you spinning? Are you weaving? Are you knitting? Are you sewing? Are you scrapbooking? Are you in doing sock madness too? Like, tell me about your life right now. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what you're creating. I wanna hear and tell me how you're doing. You know, it's been a whole year and I think a lot of people are adjusting and coming to a better place. And then there's some people who just feel worn down by the last year, which I, I understand actually. To be honest, I kind of understand either way you're feeling. I think we adjusted really quickly because I'm a natural homebody. In fact, I'm not even sure I ever want to leave the house again. Like this has actually taught me how much I just really can live in my house without going anywhere ever. So have a great week. I will see you guys on Tuesday for the breed study if you're still following it. And then the following weekend we'll have a spinning video. I hope you guys are doing great. Have a great week and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye.